Well, it's another final to look forward to as far as the Indian cricket team. The men in blue are concerned. They've advanced to the T20 World Cup 2024 final in the Windies now after beating England by an overwhelming 68 runs. And now the men in blue will take on South Africa at the Kensington Oval in Barbados. All eyes are on this mega clash because both of these teams have remained unbeaten throughout the tournament. India is making it to the championship match for the first time since 2014 in this format. Remember, they won, of course, the inaugural T20 World Cup in 2007, incidentally, in South Africa. Now, there could not be two more contrasting teams that are meeting for the final as far as the 2024 version is concerned. Take a look at the history behind both of these teams. That is going to make a difference as far as their mental makeup is concerned as well. So, India has been part of 12 ICC event finals before, including many others, uh, barring the World Cup. But this is also their seventh ICC World Cup final. So, I'm talking about T20s and ODIs. South Africa, on the other side, have made it to their very first Men's World Cup final, ODI or the T20 International. But India has another type of ghost to exercise, which is of losing ICC Trophy Finals in regularity. They've now lost the last five ICC event finals that they were part of, including, of course, the Test Championship. On the other hand, South Africa was barely even making this stage, as I said. They have had the ghost of losing two T20 World Cup semis and five ODI World Cup semis as well. But here's another thing to keep in mind. Both sides are unbeaten in the tournament. India has managed seven wins so far. But South Africa have managed eight consecutive wins. And this is the joint longest streak in the format now. Let's also take a look at India's T20 World Cup record against South Africa, which has seen some intense battles over the years. Here's a quick summary of their head-to-head -head encounters as far as this tournament is concerned. So the first one, the inaugural World Cup was held in South Africa 2007, which India won. In that tournament, India won against the home team by 37 runs. In 2009, South Africa got a revenge by 12 runs in Nottingham. And India then went on to win the next three encounters that they have played. The 2010 won by 14 runs. In 2012, they won by only one run in Colombo. That match happened, uh, that uh, tournament of course happened in Sri Lanka, if we can move forward as far as our graphics is concerned. And of course, their most recent meeting in the T20 World Cup was way back in 2014, when India won by six wickets in Dhaka. So, this is their first meeting as far as this tournament stage is concerned in 10 years. Overall, in T20 international cricket, India and South Africa have faced each other 26 times since 2007, India has a slight upper hand, winning 14 of those matches, losing 11. One had no result. But this is where it all rests. The fact is, India haven't won an ICC event trophy in over 10 years now. They faced defeat in the 2023 ODI World Cup. Can they finally break that final jinx? We're joined by experts with us in just a bit to answer exactly that question. But also listen in to what kids in Mumbai have to say. Remember, our captain Rohit Sharma hails from Mumbai and he would be looking for some relief from all of those drought questions this time around. Despite a rain-washed match, India's victory over 68 runs over England has gotten people in India excited, especially for tomorrow's finals. In fact, we of course expected uh, men in blue to get back World Cup, but now all eyes are on the T20 World Cup. Uh, what is your wish uh, for Men in Blue right now? I think India should win and I think it will win. Okay, and uh, who is your favorite player? In batting, Rohit Sharma and in bowling, Jasprit Bumrah. Uh, what are your expectations from tomorrow's match? Uh, he hasn't performed well, but uh, I think uh, he, he should perform well in tomorrow's match. Uh, what, what, is, uh, you know, what are the runs that you're expecting from Virat Kohli? I think uh, above 30 score will be nice. Above 30 would be nice. Who is your favorite player? Cricket, Indian cricket team, what is your expectation? 
मेरा फेवरेट प्लेयर रोहित शर्मा है और सिर्फ रोहित शर्मा से नहीं पूरे इंडियन टीम से मुझे एक्सपेक्टेशन है कि वो जीतेंगे कब घर लाएंगे Let me go across uh, to Deep Das Gupta, former India cricketer, and Jamie Alter, sports journalist and commentator, joining us on the show. I do thank you both for your time. Deep, let me begin with you. Um, a lot needs to talk, uh, needs to be spoken about as far as the history of the teams concerned is concerned. As I mentioned, you've got India that is very, very regular at ICC tournament finals. They've made the Test, T20, ODI World Cup finals recently now. and you've got south africa on the other side that is in its first icc world cup final so just how do you see that how do you see the mental makeup of both the teams i think very different like you said on one side you've got india which has been consistent you know i mean finalist like you mentioned the wtc then the 50 overs and in in general as well over the years uh, south africa so that that makes south africa a clear cut underdog to a great extent you know mm. because of the fact that they're playing their first icc finals uh you know so that makes them that much more dangerous if they are you know thinking on those lines as and you know I'm, we are going in there as as underdogs nothing to lose uh, on the other hand you've got india who are uh, clear favorites to be honest for these finals uh so yeah i mean from that perspective i think uh, to a certain extent it would be pressure on india and south africa would be kind of unshackled provided they are thinking like that uh, you never know <laughs> it could be the other way around as well no so let's talk a little bit more about the protea's mindset how do you approach a final like this having been called chokers for so many years despite the talent that you have had so if you were in the dressing room as a player or as the coaching staff how do you approach a final like this deep I mean for me I guess the first thing I'd say is listen you got nothing to lose I mm. mean looking at this whole environment where you know the conditions are uh, uh, favors India uh, history favors India there's so many things I mean I mean just name it it's it's kind of stacked in India's favor to that extent uh, so for South Africa it's got nothing I mean they've got nothing to lose I mean just go out there have fun enjoy yourself and they've got quality cricketers i mean from a very cricketing perspective and leave aside the mental side of it and mm. the psychological side of it mm-hmm. but if you look in from a cricket point of view uh they've got a really good bowling side as well like india might not be as potent as india but if there is a bowling unit which is as rounded as india's would be south africa they've got good seamers you've got you know mahajan who's a keshav maharaj sorry uh, who's, mm. who's who's a brilliant left arm uh, spinner shamzi is doing well and when i'm looking when i'm looking at their batting middle order especially i know they haven't really scored a lot of runs which this tournament's been like that it hasn't been a tournament for batters hmm. but it seems like south africa has has got the best middle order to play the indian spinners in these conditions hmm. namely classen david miller tristan stubbs markram and it's not that these four have played enough of these indian spinners in indian conditions in the ipl So uh they I mean so they they are a good chat and let's not forget they are unbeaten like India as well. Yeah yeah. Jamie how do you look at it? Um will South Africa be able to play that free cricket that oh we've got nothing to lose as Deep is suggesting or will the occasion be a little bit too heavy in their minds? And alternatively how does India handle the ghost of not having won an ICC trophy in 11 years now? That's a very good question. Uh look, I mean I think it can be argued and I'm sure Deep will agree here there's no more there's no two more desperate team Shivani to win an ICC <laughs> trophy. I mean, yes, uh, South Africa have many will say have sort of erased what is it 32 years of, mm. of of pain when it comes to World Cup. They haven't won it but Markram's team has become the first men's team to get to a final. That in itself I'm sure has given countless cricket fans back in the Rainbow Nation a lot of joy. Mm. But when you stack it up against what other teams have achieved, Australia, India, even the West Indies have won this twice. They still don't have that trophy. What 98 was when they won the first Champions Trophy. Yeah. Many many cricket fans in South Africa won't even remember that because it was a tournament that was not supposed to be big. Yeah. It was it was sort of created to boost associate nations and it happened in in dhaka against west indies you know so against all that you know exactly like deep said i'll agree with him 
they don't have anything to lose but then again they're they've gone where no team from south africa has ever gone i agree with deep the bowling is second only to india but shivani south african teams have always had great bowling attacks they've always had great fielding uh, sides and they've had much much better batsmen than this so there is that question in a low scoring world cup hmm. against against a top team like india also unbeaten a team that has gotten to many finals hasn't won does that middle order have what it takes like deep mentioned to crack india yes but then again you look at akshar you look at kuldeep hmm. kuldeep had to wait four matches to get his chance he like dubey was picked for the matches in the west indies and the guys taken what 10 wickets in in 3 matches going at under 6 and over it's it's going to be south africa's biggest test they've knocked off i mean nepal by one run bangladesh three runs they've done brilliantly to get here but for me with obviously the, the india bias aside their biggest test is not just being in the final it's coming up against bumrah akshar and uh, and kuldeep to my mind Yes, absolutely. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Indian bowling and just how brilliantly it has performed. But I do want Deep's thoughts on this as well. A lot has been said, Deep, about the new T20 mindset of the Indian team, right? I was in Australia when they lost to England in that semi-final, and that is being seen as the tipping point of a change around as far as the T20 mindset is concerned. We've got a lot of players, uh, including the captain, who has lost ICC finals under him. and a lot of players for whom this might be the final opportunity if not in this format in world cups completely so how does how do they handle that pressure that ghost of not winning a title see you know what what has been really refreshing uh, as far as the indian team is concerned is their approach towards t20 cricket which i thought the last game against england came a full circle it was against england in 2022 in adelaide when i think rohit and the team realize you know what the the way we play t20 is not good enough we need to change and they have changed so there is a a huge difference in the indian t20 side maybe a couple of years ago from now hmm. they're playing a lot more fearlessly and i thought you know and and especially looking at the semis against england i thought maybe semi final let's see now in a knockout situation do they still play the same uh, uh, the with with the same method and which they did so i think that makes a huge difference in terms of the mindset if you're going in there with that mindset you know irrespective of what happens we're going to play this uh, this form of cricket and i think that will help in in the uh, in the in the long run it has already changed how uh, batters are playing even though these aren't very high scoring conditions but you still when you look at these batters even if india loses two three wickets you still have hardik and uh, surya coming and and playing freely so i think that would have a domino effect in terms of you know whatever has happened in the past and how much the indian teams thinking about this fan and you know jamie you've also got uh, rahul dravid whose contract is coming to an end isn't it uh, so this is a swan song of sorts for him to Oh, absolutely i love that i love that quote he he gave in which he used the analogy of um one of the mountaineers was asked you know why do you want to climb everest he said because it's there you know and the same question i understand having having been part of many many press conferences i understand sometimes these questions which we journalists ask can grate on the minds of cricketers but i thought rahul dravid handled it very well he said we want to win it because it's it's just there and it's so simple but i think it gives I mean, Deep has played with with Rahul, so he'll mm. know far more. It just sort of says, maybe the calmness which he's, uh, you know, sort of made peace with. You know, it's it's been a rocky tenure. Yes, yeah. under the Dravid Rohit combo, they've got to many finals, but the fact remains they still haven't won. I know there was an Asia Cup, but let's get real. Mm. We we Indian fans and and journalists, we want the ICC you know trophy to come home. Mm. And I believe now finally, you know, maybe it's because he knew my contract's not being. um renewed maybe that's played a fact i absolutely agree with what deep said that awareness or the acceptance that you know it's 2022 and we're falling behind uh, mm. lower rank teams i think dravid's had a big big part in that and i hope i hope that india wins for rohit i think on november 19th is a blot he he desperately needs to to erase because the heart just went out to him so selfless throughout that campaign so i i hope of course i hope everyone but i hope for uh for rahul dravid for rohit sharma for virat kohli and also a word on jasprit bumrah mm. i think 90% of india's success 
has been the bowling of which i mean there's no there's no better bowler than jaspreet bumrah yeah you know I, I, there's not much left to say as far as our indian bowling is concerned we know they are world class they are the best possibly um and death over uh, a specialty for our both bumrah and ashpreet all of them have done really well and then of course we've got that middle over bowlers that uh, jamie and uh, you were talking about but so let me talk about the batting which is where we've seen the hiccups before i go to deep on this jamie what do you think about the virat kohli question does it need to be addressed uh, should he go back to number 3 maybe pant opens instead i have been one of the more vocal people to have said yes but you know shivani when you're when you're 7-0 you don't you don't you don't change it. okay you know, yes it's it's been a very tough world cup like deep mentioned for batsmen the new york leg was very very tough only a couple indian batsmen Uh, and even south african batsmen were able to sort of score runs there um, but again we move to the west indies not ideal shivani but it's gotten better um i look at the two openers who are probably on their last legs as as t20 cricketers they're both playing the same role shivani they they both bought in and it's fantastic to even accept that they bought into that mentality but the point is one one of them has 250 runs at 43 at a strike rate of 156 one has the lowest average for any indian opener in any history and he struggled i like the fact that virat kohli has not taken the easier route which would have been to sort of buy time he has bought in 100% as i see it but the runs haven't come it's a problem but shivani when you're in the world cup unbeaten it's one more match whether he scores or not i i frankly don't care because the team is unbeaten and yes he's not yeah. had a massive role to play but he's bought in and for someone of that stature to put aside the ego and buy into the team mentality i think that's very very commendable yeah i think they've given him a role um and he's bought into that role and they're kind of moving ahead from having to rely on one or two names in the middle order especially to deliver for you uh, a quick fire knock at the top possibly more valuable than a 50 from virat kohli in some i think that's the mentality from the team right now so i see deep nodding so deep i want to ask you the other question then what about the shivam dubey question because that's the other spot that is being discussed now we've got replacements in the squad that can come in and can play the role that he's expected to play so do you think that may be a change that the indian team could look at or as we as we all possibly are expecting the final may not be the occasion where they will make any changes i don't think there'll be any changes shivani to be honest i think india has been unbeaten yes shivam has quietly got into that role because these are very, these conditions are very alien to what shivam dobe is known to do Hmm. right he's more of a batter would come into those middle overs especially against spin and hit those big sixes but this, this this world cup has not been about sixes so it's been very different in terms of conditions and shivam last two games i mean not the england one but australia and before that hmm. he's played those you know cameos which is what is expected of him it's not expected of him to get 70 80 you know what is expected is those cameos yes you can say you were expecting more Hmm. but i believe there won't be any changes should go with the same 11 give those guys the confidence shivam dube might have a big role in taking down someone like uh, you know keshav maharaj during the middle overs keshav's been absolutely brilliant for south africa hmm. so a left hander in that middle order rishab and him might have a role to play not just uh, keshav maharaj but also against shamsi All right uh since I do have you let me ask you about the bowlers they've been brilliant of course um not much that hasn't been said so far uh death over bowling is absolutely fantastic uh, any mini matchups that you're looking forward to because this is also a south african batting lineup as you said which is the most explosive in the middle overs so any mini matchups between the larger contests that you're looking forward to the Uh, that's a really interesting one so obviously i mean a lot of people ask which phase would be important listen it's a 20 over game so all phases are important right mm. it's not a test match or something so every phase is important but the key matchups as you rightly mentioned for me would be as i mentioned before that middle order and indian spinners you know again namely classen miller uh class and miller markram and tristan stubbs against the three indian spinners hmm. so that would be a very very crucial match up and we're talking about barbados barbados day game 
okay, the reference point would be India versus Afghanistan. Even mm. though India got 181, but I thought India scored 15 or 20 more than par. So that was still a 160, 165 kind of a pitch. So Barbados, even though it's a, it has been comparatively high scoring, but during a day game, so 165. So there would be some help for the spinners. So I think that matchup becomes very, very crucial. That middle order, the South African middle order, the Indian spinners. And obviously, right at the top, the other important batter that you've got to be mindful of, the South African batter, would be Quinton Dickock. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's a match winner, right? And obviously, we have Bumra. So, I mean, goes without saying. I mean, Bumra is, is an absolute legend. He's, he's a once-in-a-generation talent. And, mm. yeah. All right. Just enough time for final comments. Uh, Jamie, uh, what does your heart tell you? Can India do it this time? Heart always says yes. It's it's the okay, mind. Okay, what does your sometimes... mind tell you? <laughs> no, the mind. No, I think I think this is a rare, rare instance where um, again I'm not not undermining South Africa. Best huh. second best bowling attack after India, but the heart and mind are now uh, aligned. Unlike November 19th, and I think it's it's India's World Cup. 11 years is for us Indian fans. It's 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 as long as 32 years for South Africa. So. I think it's going to be a good day in Barbados. Right. Deep, uh, what do you feel? What's your gut telling you? Uh, I, I think the drought uh, on 29th, as in tomorrow, we might see the drought uh, being over as far as ICC self-aware is concerned. I think this team has worked hard. I, you know, it was so heartening and, uh, and emotional to see Rohit's pictures yeah. post that English, uh, England game. And uh, that just says a lot what it has taken for him, the whole team, last two years to change the whole mindset of the players, the system. I mean, a lot of credit to that team management, the players, anyone like the selectors and everyone else who's been part of that. Hmm. Because they've also changed the way we kind of think about T20 cricket. We are, no- we are now saying, you know what? A- 20 ball 30 is job done, is a job well done, rather than, you know, getting stuck into age old notions about those milestones. So, uh, you know, it it, it was really, really good to see how Indian team has come about uh, doing their job in last two years. And I and I hope and I'm quite confident. Okay, I'm quietly confident uh, that 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 drops are getting over. Right. I'll leave it on that note. Uh, Good note to end on. Deep and uh, Jamie, thanks a lot for joining us. Well, this is going to be the true test, isn't it? Of the new brand of T20 cricket that everybody's been talking about India playing. You've got to win titles with that. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye for now.